But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of your deeds. Psalm 73 verse 28. Ladies and gentlemen, the table is set. God is present and you are welcome. Please pull a seat. I am your host, Mutumba Litebele, and you are through to the men's table where we discuss biblical manhood and the issues affecting our society today. We use a biblical lens. Everything is scripture. Everything is biblical. And we have a number of interesting, amazing guests for you. So tune in, stay in, stay with us. We appreciate you being here. My guest today is Mr. Mwape Mlenga. Yes, sir. Camilo. Yes, sir. I think I sort of swapped out those names. <laughs> so let's see. Your first name. Your first Mlenga. name is. Your first name is Mlenga. Mlenga. Yeah. Mlenga Camilo Mwape. Mlenga Camilo Mwape. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Camilo. Yes, sir. <laughs> We are at the main table. We are at the main table. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you like I don't know you. Okay. You <laughs> For the sake to. of everybody else. <laughs> I mean, I know your story, but I think that you have, you have a very powerful story that our guests might be able to learn a lot from. Building a brand, doing business as a man of God, um, challenges, challenges of it. We deal a lot with, um, on this show, we talk a lot about managing stress, managing hard situations. And you have been running your business for a while. And people relate a lot with the quality of your merchandise, what you do. And it's funny how you've been able to build a brand away from your face. I don't think most people know who owns <laughs> Noble <laughs> Society. <laughs> So we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump into all of that. Matter of fact, yeah. let's just jump. Let's just jump into that. Noble Society. What's the vision behind it, and what is Noble Society for those that do not know? For those that don't know, yes, sir. Uh, Noble Society is a clothing line. Okay. And um, the mission is to bring motivation and boldness to youths. Okay. Inspiring them to believe in their dream and potential. All right. Yeah. How did you come up with a vision for it? Like I've always wanted to have a, what's this on a clothing line. Yeah. From the time, yeah. From. Have you? Are you were, like one of those kids that were fashion conscious growing up. At some point, yes. I mean, <laughs> your sneaker game is. Yes, that is. Ash. If you ever meet Carmelo, <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you ever meet Carmelo, I love shoes. Just look at his shoes. Yeah, the, I love shoes. I the love man, shoes. the man's. Uh, you, you've got no. You've got. Uh, you, you've got great taste, taste, sir. Yes. So you you were you're one of those children that were always fashion conscious. Like yes. where did it come from? Um, I think those let's see let's see uh twenty I think early early twenty twenties. Am I no wait sorry mm. um early two thousands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we moved we moved we moved to Chadley, mm -hmm. and I <coughs> met uh I met Madaliso. All right. Who's a friend of mine. Yeah, okay. who's a friend of mine. It was, he's a friend of mine. Yeah. All right. So he was like the sneaker guru, you know, um, mm -hmm. because back in the day when we were growing up, it was, uh, it was very difficult to own nice shoes. Okay. In the sense that we, uh, I think, I think I, I would blame our parents for that. They did have <laughs> taste. <so. laughs> they didn't have taste. Okay. <laughs> But All then right. sneakers back then were very expensive. No, they were. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So, uh, he, I think it's the all of them. The brother, him, they were all sneaker sneakerheads. So from there, um, for those that are listening, a sneakerhead is somebody who uh, who loves shoes and collects shoes. Okay, so it's the yes. same. It's the same thing as a hip hop head. Exactly. Okay, so somebody who loves hip hop. Okay. Yeah. Terminology. Let's yeah. go. Mm -hmm. So I, I would look at his, the cool shoes that he used to have, and then I was like, damn, I need to go on one of those. Any one of those? Yes. I need okay. one of those babies. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, but they were very expensive to own. It's not like nowadays where you can walk into a store, mm. um, they're affordable, uh, different designs and whatnot. Right. Back then to own a sneaker. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, like, it was like, it was like a prideful thing where if it, yeah, even in boarding school, I remember back in boarding school, um, you close school, 
following time everyone used to come with new shoes mm. and they're all looking at okay by then uh timberlands were hot yes yeah, yeah. adidas sneakers uh the shows stripes yeah the stripes yeah yeah that those were the in things no door yeah door. I owned so, a couple of those <laughs> <laughs> so like you uh-huh. needed to um, it was more like a sense of belonging you know right. when you own uh a nice shoe such as one of us is one of those brands it was more like um a sense of belonging it it, it builds up confidence in you mm. yeah and you always want to be identified to say there's a cool kid over there you yes. know yeah yeah so sure from from his sneaker collections <coughs> i started collecting sneakers as well right. and um i would find myself i would save money actually yep i would save money uh my mom didn't like uh did like this habit but i used to whenever they give us uh what do you call that uh Up money yeah i would save it i wouldn't use it for brick i wouldn't use it for anything i would save the money Wait until the term ends. You were fasting for your sneakers, yes. just not doing the prayer side of exactly. Okay. So I save the money. Immediately we close. Mm-hmm. I would have to go in town, go to Salaola, check for what uh, what shoes are there, which ones look neat. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that I would uh, actually buy. So by the time we're opening school, I have new sneakers as well. See. Keeping up with the cool kids. E- exactly. I hear you. Yeah. So okay. that's where the whole collection, inspiration of collecting sneakers came from. Okay. Yeah. How does this connect into you wanting to own a clothing line at some point? When did this dream, when did you have this dream? Um, actually, my dad inspired um, this dream. Okay. Yeah, my dad, um, my late dad, in fact. Both mom and my dad are late. So my condolences. They owned they owned a printing company. And um those I think I remember um, were closing. That was I think in grade six. I was in grade six. My father was I think three or four. Um those every time schools have these uh what do you call that? Closing parties. Yeah. Yes. So End of school bash. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So now we were looking for an outfit or something to wear. Okay. So back then, uh, the time <coughs> when we got introduced to music, we got uh, we got to the lane of Eminem. Mm. Yeah, my young brother was a big fan of Eminem. Marshall Mathers. So, yeah. Mm. So there was this. Um, I think there was a piece that that was uh, released back then. And it was only found in Kamala. We actually saw something like that on TV. Then we started telling our mother to look for that shit. See? So now she, she goes past it because she doesn't know what you're talking about. Mm. So then she goes and tells my dad, Hey, these boys, there's a shit that these guys want, which uh, I need to find, but I don't know where to find it. Okay. So we are uh, we were very young, so we couldn't even um guide her through to say no, this mm. is where yes, it was just the thing of no, it has got this guy got just printed every name on what's this uh, on, on the shirt. Right. Yeah, finally my mom found those shirts. There was a yellow one and an orange one. So uh the following day we that's when the the, the party was happening, the closing party. All right. We wore those shirts in the morning. So we're going to school. Then my dad looks at them you're like, ah. so these are the shirts that you guys are troubling, <laughs> <laughs> troubling your mother over. I'm like, yes, these are the ones that we wanted. So it's like, uh, I do printing, you know, right? Like, I can uh, yes. make this. Yeah. Like, I can make this with your face on it. So for me, from there, that was like a spark of artists. So that's where the spark mm. was. The inspiration came. Boom. Okay. Like, so my face on a t-shirt cool that sounds cool so now i was now more curious to find out how i would have my shirt printed on the sh- on, or how i would have my face printed, printed on, on the shirt right yeah so like that um that thought stayed with me actually i think the whole day so now i uh, started thinking i'm like okay so how 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 does that happen so now 
after the whole party uh school party ended uh we came back so since my dad mentioned to say oh i have a printing company we can do this the first thing when he came back i was like tomorrow we need to go to your office <laughs> and i was like okay cool suddenly you were interested in your interested. father's work exactly okay we need to go to your office yes sir. i need to find out how my face can be printed on the shit curiosity yes Mm-hmm. Went to the office and then um, got to meet the workers, uh, saw how the setup was. By then, uh, he was one of, um, <coughs> if, ever, if you ever heard of Jogged Investments, mm. yeah, he was one of the, I would say, biggest, one of the biggest uh, printing companies in Zambia back then. What year is this? What time period is this? Uh, early 90s? Uh, no. Late, yeah. From the 80s, I think, well, what was that, 19, I can't, I can't remember the dates, really. Okay. But from the 90s all the way to, mm. he passed away in 2004, but mom still carried on with the vision of, uh, uh, the vision and the, and the business. Right, okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, from there, I looked at the machines, I looked at, uh, there was graphic designers there, I looked at the graphic design. So I was this curious kid. I, it's like each and every department I go, I go check. Okay, uh, so he designs this. Okay, so mm-hmm. how's the designing? I go on his computer. I look at what you do. I think back then they were using what? CorelDRAW. CorelDRAW. Yeah, it's still the in thing. Still around. Still around. So I'd look. I'm like, um, so I asked the design. I'm like, so how do I get my face printed on the shirt? And then he showed me. He showed me the process to say, no, we have to more like capture an image of you, put it on the program, and then we get to use um, the machine to print out. There's a paper which is called TTC. Mm-hmm. We use that TTC or OBA. We use that. We print on it, and um, uh, we print using the printer. After that, we get the T-shirt, take it to the uh, what you call it, uh, heat press. Mm. They hit press the material onto the shit. So he showed me even some samples. I'm like, so it would come out like this. There was one shit which had like um, an elephant uh, on it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this is how the shit gets to come out. I'm like, oh, cool. This is interesting. Went where the whole production happened. That was behind screen. Uh, yeah, that was, we had, an, um, we had a space where the printing was being done from. Mm. And that was uh, screen print. Back then, screen print was like, it's still, it's still, it's still one of the um, traditional ways of, uh, what's this, T-shirt printing. So that was what we used uh, most of the times. So I, am, I, I go to the back office, I look at what's happening, how the whole shirts have been, the process of how the shirts have been printed. And I'm like, this is interesting. So, the moment I got back home, because mm. I gathered all the information that I needed to gather that day. So now I I get to sit down and then now I'm like, okay. Um, so I asked, first of all, I asked the, the graphic designer. He told me to say, no, even apart from your face, anything else can be printed. I was like, anything else? Like, yes, anything that you want <laughs> can be printed on the shirt. I'm like, cool. The way so, your face is lighting up, it's like you're here, you're finding out new superpowers. That yes, you could like, have. <laughs> as a kid, you're like, yes, my goodness. I mean, like, yes. uh, so I'm able to create things yes. from my head, Yeah. implement those things, and they come to life. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yes, you can do that. Okay, cool. So I used to do uh, drawing here and there, but mm-hmm. I wasn't... Uh, I never did art. I never did art, but I, I did do some form of drawing. So I would now start picturing myself, uh, start imagining things. Mm. Like, okay, how would I want, uh, how would I want an artwork, or what do I want to print first of all? Mm. Uh, <coughs> I think the first project which I did, I drew. I was a fan of pink. Mm. Yeah, artist. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. So I, I, wrote I, I, I just, <laughs> I, you know, I was not expecting that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, she's. Yeah, mm, I was a big on. fan. I was a big fan of All pink, right. and then um, 
I got a shirt, a white uh-huh. shirt. I drew uh, the word pink, but with a microphone. As the eye, mm. I used it. Uh, I drew it as a microphone. Okay. I drew the word pink uh, with a pen. First, I started with a pencil. Because now I was picturing what happens, the process that happens uh, mm. at my dad's workplace. To say, okay, this is what they do. They produce an artwork from on the computer. They make the artwork on the computer. Mm-hmm. They print it out. Take it on the, um, uh, it's called a screen. You create a screen and then you expose the artwork to the sun. That was, that was the method that they were using in order for the screen to create that artwork. Mm. And then that screen is what is now, you use ink to actually now produce um, the artwork on the t-shirt. Okay. So for me, I imagined the process, how it went. But then I was like, okay, look, uh, he talked about heat. Um, there's a white shirt. And then there's there's a pen and pe- there's a pen. And there's, what's this? There's a pencil here. Okay. And I'm looking, okay, there's the iron. There's a t-shirt. There's the pen. <laughs> so I drew that. <laughs> I drew okay. that. I drew, I drew the, uh, I drew the word pink. Uh-huh. And then, um... This 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 is a project which no one in the house knew what knew was about. happening. Okay. Yeah. So I drew that, and then I got I got the iron because I'm thinking ink, and uh, he mentioned this. They use ink. Mm. So in my head, I'm thinking it must the be same, the same ink. It's the same ink. Same ink. I'm like uh-huh. they they, c- they can't be you know a different. So okay. Yeah, I drew that. Um, got the pen got the paint made it more thicker okay so i'm like thinking to say okay um since they use the heat press to make it dry so i will use um the iron the iron yes to dry the artwork okay so that's what i did okay which was to me it was a success because i was in my head i'm like uh if it feels obviously the ink will spread if it doesn't it will dry up okay yeah so that happened uh and i was excited started wearing the t-shirt everywhere and then now uh it got washed after it got washed like the ink just you know yeah spread all over the shirt and i'm like uh okay this method was wrong <laughs> anyway lesson learned okay. so i started um then i remember the mention to say ttc okay so since he said ttc i have to use a computer Mm. to make the artwork and then uh, print it out. So this day, um, um, I think I asked, yeah, we went to the office again. Mm. But this is after my my dad had passed away. So uh, we went to the office. There's an artwork which I created using, I, mean, I even started teaching myself Corel now. Because mm. I'll just sit next to the designer, I look at the tools he's using, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, okay, uh, it doesn't look difficult. So I created the artwork. Mm-hmm. I asked my sister for two two papers, which they didn't know what was happening. Uh, after I created Is the plain the papers artwork, or TTC? TTC. Okay. I, I got two, and then there was a shit I got from Salawala. I was like, this is a shit going to try on okay did that went to mom's office printed out the ttc mm. so now i don't know the temperatures okay of uh, <laughs> switch, <laughs> <laughs> switch on the heat press mm-hmm. i have no idea what uh temperature it's supposed to to be on because they're supposed yeah. to regulate the temperature and this shit had uh um, I don't know what kind of material that was. Okay. But then, immediately, I waited for it to heat up. Put the shit there. Put the TTC. Mm-hmm. He pressed that thing. Okay. The shit. Uh, you know, it, it got bent. <laughs> and then I was just like, okay, this one is another field project. Okay. And that's how I just packed it. I'm like, okay. Uh, for now, let me, let me watch this. Let me step away from this. This is not working. You had never thought of asking for guidance? No, I didn't. Because I'm a curious... My wife says I'm a curious person. Okay. 
Yes, which uh, in the beginning it was kind of like uh, what you call it. Um, it was kind of irritating for her because mm. I'm like this person who gets to ask a lot of questions. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So because of that curiosity, I started teaching myself certain things. That's why it's even easy for me to research when I don't know something. Mm. I'll um, I'll easily use Google or uh, YouTube because these are the platforms that are there. <coughs> I'll search for something and um, it'll give me answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I packed that project. Can I ask a question there? Mm-hmm. Are you? Do you enjoy figuring things out on your own? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's it's like it's it's fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, yes, I did this. I figured it out. I figured it out. So this okay. is the code. This, these are the things that are hidden from us, and then yes, I figured that out. So all right, it's fun for me, and I enjoy I enjoy that. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. As you were. Yes. So when that project was packed, um, the words that my dad had spoken to say you can create, we can print your face on a T-shirt. Mm. It it stayed. It stuck. It was stuck with me for a long time. How old are you at this time when you pack the project? I think I was in my teenage, <coughs> teenage, what's this, teenage life, but because um, I don't really remember like the exact. Exact moment. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I know is that the dream has been there from the time I was, um, I think, 12, somewhere there. That's the time, 12, I think, yeah. It's been there. Mm-hmm. And it stayed with me. So it was a thing of always reminding myself to say, okay, um, I think I would, I would want to own a clothing line one day. By, by then, in our teenage life, there was, um, there was Adidas. No, in fact, there was what's this? Uh, School of Haddocks. School of Haddocks. School of Haddocks. Fubu. Fubu for us by uh, us. Rockaway. Yeah. And then um, all these, some of the brands have died, but others are still Fat Farm. Mm-hmm. So, some of them are still existing. And my dad used to wear most of these brands. So I think the more the more I used to see my dad so rock these brands, the more the vision was being, that inspiration yes, was being developed and mm-hmm. i always said one day i'm gonna own a clothing line one day i'm gonna own a clothing line but we didn't have the tools for that mm-hmm. and i had no idea what the clothing line was <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea so fast forward to 20 i think that was 20 2014 mm. yeah 2014 um i decided to revisit the the dream okay. and then uh i think what inspired the revisit what inspired uh yeah what inspired the vision the was the revisit was um i used to work for retunes okay yeah, i used to work for retunes i was um head of productions mm. so i was I was assigned as head of productions and we had no idea what also as in what because uh, Ritunes was more of a music distribution uh, mm. company right so we wanted some form of like we wanted people to to engage with people mm. to have some form of ownership to connect with us so that's how we developed uh, the Ritunes apparel mm-hmm. yeah I mean like Steven Steven is there Steven Steven Mwale yeah, he's the um, he's the founder of Retunes, and um, we were actually planning together mm. how how to develop what is <coughs> um, the apparel together. Because right. for me, it was more like being from a background where there was printing. Mm. It was more like okay, you know the basic tools about what is apparel, what we need to do. Mm. But <coughs> we just need somebody who can um, produce produce good quality. Uh, I think that was what Nijisa Chabe. Yes, Nijisa Chabe. We're trying to find where he gets the the shirts done. For those that do not know, what is Nijisa Chabe? 
for those that don't know. You know, like, um, what's the guy? Yes. Rest in peace to, the, to EMJ. EMJ. EMJ was the owner of... Um, Emmanuel was his first name? Yeah. Yeah, Emmanuel EMJ. Was, Rest in peace. Yeah, but he was popularly known as EMJ. Yeah. Yeah. So he, I think, should be the one who told us to say like, oh, you guys, you can actually have um, this stuff printed from this guy, you know, not me. So Jesus Chabe was a brand that EMJ owned. owned. Yes. Okay. So... We got to find out a link where we could have good um, production being done. Uh, the production that was used, uh, the method of what is of uh, printing that was used was called VideoFlex, which wasn't popular back then, mm. or mainly used in town. In town, most of most of uh, it was screen printing that was used. Mm. So now, what we wanted was that quality. Okay. Yeah, so to produce quality, we actually the first shit that we the first shit that we did, we did screen printing, okay, but then we didn't like the way the turnout was. Mm. So, uh, and I think it was Mr. Maybe who actually did also the first ones. So we asked him to say, Okay, look, um, we don't like the results of this. Mm. I think though, this, uh, if you remember, there was t shirts that were written, it's written. Com. Yes, I yes. love streetunes.com. I yes. remember those. Yeah, we didn't like the way the the ink was coming out, so we asked him to say, "Okay, what other method can we use to to make sure that the quality is good?" Mm-hmm. And he mentioned to say, "No, there's this visual flex, but it's more on <coughs> uh, the expensive side in terms mm. of production." Right. Yeah. So since I was. Um, assigned to be head of productions i was able to say to make the final decision to say you know what uh let's let's go this route we want to give people quality mm-hmm. that's the only way people will connect with us and uh since i was familiar with how the whole rockaware how these uh brands look like mm-hmm. i knew i knew the kind of quality that needed to be put out to the market so that's how we decided to go with the visual flex. Okay. Yeah. So that the whole working with uh, retunes and the turnout was great. We we actually um, we connected with different countries. Mm. People from outside started buying T-shirts, started engaging with us, and uh, it became a, a popular brand. Everybody wanted to own. Um, it's one of it's Richard's t shirts. What made it more popular was that the um, Proud to be African campaign. Mm. That one was the one that now, I mean, the phrase is catchy, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, proud it's to be big. African, like it was big, yes. I uh, more, more, more could have been done, okay. And uh, we did the best that we could because we uh, I think we out we outdid our ourselves like the performance wise like because of the turnout it mm. was very great so because of that background and that experience that's how i sat down and revisit revisited my dream be like okay i want to own a clothing line but i don't know what to call it mm. yeah i don't know what to call it i know how to produce now that i know how <laughs> what's <laughs> how to produce stuff okay <laughs> yeah but so the this thing is where is, the branding begins. Yes. All right. Walk us yeah. through it. This is where the branding begins. Yes, sir. See, um, I know what I want. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that I don't have a name. You see? And um, something I learned about names from church mm. is that uh, names describe character, des- describe purpose mm. of something. Mm-hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, um, what would what would what would describe what I'm trying to birth, and how mm. are people going to connect with it? So, because this information was not everywhere, mm. um, it w- it was very difficult. But then I think YouTube, YouTube, yeah, did exist back then during that time, mm. but I just didn't know how to use it. Google okay. as well existed. I just didn't know how to use it. Right. Yeah, because I did have that smartphone by then. So, 
when I first got, I think that was an iPhone 4. Yeah, good second hand iPhone 4. I think that's where most of the research now uh, began. Mm. Yeah, I'd spend time, maybe the whole day, even just brainstorming. Okay, um, since names describe character and purpose of so, of a person or mm. something, and I'm like, okay, what would be the best name to give this brand? So oh, I've got an English name as well, which is uh, Patrick. <laughs> okay. So um after learning to say names describe i was like okay what does i go to google and i'm like what does patrick mean mm. and then boom patrick <coughs> means a noble man okay i like okay so um this is not by mistake that i have named patrick but okay so if it means a noble man and uh what am i trying to do i'm trying to build i'm trying to build a better society Hmm. in the sense that um why did that matter to you having a better society it mattered because i'd look around and i'm thinking okay um when you look at zambia we we're in a position whereby we it's it's what we call that um we have room to grow hmm. you see we have room to grow we have uh tools we we do have tools now that 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 we can apply that can make us grow and the whole thing of um mm, let me see um coming from a background where we had we had things at our fingertips mm. yeah it was more like an advantage to whereby I'm like okay people don't have access to certain things isn't there a way of how we can build a better society for people like better cities better mm. uh, access to water better living <coughs> yeah. so I was like okay I would marry the two noble society like creating a better society um I'm trying to explain something sorry okay let me yeah. see if i can guide that <laughs> no it, what? i got it <coughs> i got it all right i'm just trying to put uh, put your words together yeah okay shoot why build a better society um for me i believe everyone should should have an opportunity to a better life mm. You see, um, a better life. I believe uh, God's desire, God has promised us to say, I'll give you a good life. Mm. That's his desire for everyone to have a good life. Poverty is not like uh, a push, uh, an, an, an option. Mm. You see, God's desire is just for you to have a good life. But the thing is, how do you have a good life? You see. And uh, it's because certain people have access to certain things. Some are born in a rich family and some uh, have to work hard to get to that level. Mm. So uh, for me, it was more like, okay, um, yes, I'm from a comfortable home. And I look around, you've got friends who are not from that comfortable home. Mm. And uh, you're looking at them to say, okay, so why are they in this position? Mm. And you're forgetting to say you may have an advantage over them because of the access that you have, that your parents have built for you guys, that, you know, that hedge. Right. Yeah. So you s you get to have that passion to like, okay, you know what, um, how can I be a contribution to, to a community? How can I be a contribution even to people? And you're thinking to say, okay, if I can develop a business that can generate money mm. and um, create opportunities such as jobs for people, that would be that would be a contribution for me to to us is building a, a better uh, society. Okay. Yeah. So I. 
also even what is this inspiration also came from um watching kingdom related kind of movies okay uh, yeah whereby the noble men are the mm. ones in charge of making sure that the kingdom everybody in the kin- kingdom has as access to the kingdom wealth mm. helping the king to also govern the kingdom mm-hmm. so when i'm thinking okay if noble people are the ones who are in charge of this and this is a society we're trying to build mm-hmm. uh if i merge the two it will make sense okay by it be like noble society so these um these are noble men who are working towards building a better society mm. and by doing so you need to have a dream these men need to be creative these men need to provide um they need to provide some source of uh what do you call this um some source of opportunity that people can access from okay yeah so that's where that whole that's where the whole noble society putting noble society and together the noble and society yeah. together okay so you have noble men who are mm-hmm. building who are creating a society a better society for people to have access to uh, a good life all right yeah and also i think in zambia we most of the tribes have some form of kingdom setups mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. we're coming from so we are all kings we are all queens we are all coming from that uh background so it's not it's not a foreign it's not a foreign thing it's something that in africa that's where the real kings are from mm. yeah so that's where the I, the idea coming up with the idea so it started coming from so i did much of my research from 20 2014 okay and the brand was only launched in 20 29 2018 or 19. that's almost five four years sir yes okay yeah reason mm. being is because um i was trying to find out what a clothing line is mm. what it what the purpose uh the purpose for a clothing line and uh how beneficial is the clothing line to people and how am i going to use that as uh a tool to create opportunities for people mm-hmm. yeah so i needed to learn the business part about running a clothing line okay yeah because once you build that system it's the only system that can help people have access to having jobs mm. which can better their communities mm-hmm. yeah so it took that long so you're talking about a dream that was from childhood <laughs> all the way to teenage life and, yes sir um let's uh, i think my early 20s yeah that's the time now this like you get to have flashbacks you know so that itself speaks to you to say maybe this is your vision and the holy spirit is just telling you look you're sleeping wake <laughs> up <laughs> <laughs> wake up you're sleeping you have experience mm-hmm. you've been dreaming about this thing mm-hmm. you see it in your head every time mm-hmm. you do have capacity yes i didn't have finances mm. you see and uh, i think that's where the challenge the challenge is mostly when you want to start a business is that you don't have you always want to have capital to pump in and you think to say that's when now you establish the business no the business starts with you it starts uh, i believe it starts with you the way noble began it had no form of funding mm. see. it was just an idea it was just an idea that was birthed and um i later on now believe to say um go to give you provision and it gives you a vision so it's not it's not it's not about you trying to worry about where that provision is going to come from mm. all you need to do first of all is know the vision understand the vision what is what what um, understand the vision mm-hmm. where it's coming from how you're supposed to work with it and how you're supposed to build it mm-hmm. the funding will come 
So it's not it's not always that you need uh, funds to start something. You just need an idea. Okay. From that idea, people will believe in you. And when people get to believe in you, um, you will find you will find what's his provision. Though, uh, if you if your dream is that big, and some people actually even fund it for you, mm. they will actually uh, what you call it stakeholders. People will buy into your dream and tell you to say, look, uh, I'll give you this much. I'm going to own this much, but I just need you, who's the carrier of this vision, to make sure that you fulfill it. Mm-hmm. I'm just helping you. Okay. You see. Yeah. So. We figured out the name. We yeah. are 2014 all the way to 2018, 2019. We are studying. Before, before actually, the next question I'm going to ask is what becomes your next step to actually start? Tin? But on your research, mm-hmm. which case studies did you look at? Who did you study the most when you're looking um, for systems? When I was looking for systems, um, I learn. I've got a. I think I've got a unique way of how I learn things. Okay. Um, <coughs> I learn things from anything. All right. For some strange reason. <laughs> All right. Care <laughs> yeah. to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. Um. Even from just like how music, how music business is done in terms of mm. distribution, I learn from that. Okay. Um, uh, sneakers as well. How sneakers are designed and whatnot. How they come up with uh, different designs and pattern patterns. Mm. I learn from that. Right. Yeah. So it's very strange, but. It's it's unique. So for me, what I did, I think the 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 one that I used uh, the most was Google to find out what the clothing line is. I don't remember the source who wrote that information, okay. but uh, that was I think that was just my main question of what is a clothing line? How do you run a clothing line? Okay. So you never had specific brands such as Adidas, Louis Vuitton no. that you were looking into? No, like only okay. it's only recent. Mm. That I've I've gotten to know how those brands um are, are were built. Okay. Yeah, like how they started, how they um how they market their 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 products, their All campaigns. Right. It's only now. Because uh, I think advertising and marketing has changed. Mm. Yes, uh, and the, yeah, it has changed. In uh, whereby it's no longer about the product; it's mm. about the emotions that you spark in your customers. So, like, emotions are the ones that now um, that are now that the ones that decide whether I want to buy this product or not. Mm. Yeah. So. Because of that change that has been happening, that's something that even um, not just it's not just limited. I think to products alone, even mm. services. You know, okay. just the way you talk to someone, the way you um, offer your services to someone is going to make that person decide whether they want to buy into your service or they want to buy your product. Mm-hmm. So it's more about just engaging people's uh, emotions, but your product needs to be, uh, it your product needs to be that unique. It needs to find that spark in mm. that and that um, in your in your audience, in your consumers, so that okay. they're able to buy your product. So mostly, I used uh, Google mm-hmm. to get that information of how what what the clothing line is um yeah i got to know why people buy clothes for mostly it's about what's his prestige Mm. it gives them confidence it gives them a sense of belonging and um uh, yeah it gives them a sense of belonging that confidence look good yeah look good Feel yeah, good. that look. Yeah, everybody wants to feel good. Everybody wants to look. You know. Of course. So now, when when I got that information, I was like, okay, so I need to make my brand in such a way whereby 
when I wear it. Mm. They won't make me look like um what have you worn? Mm. Yeah. But it'll be a thing of um is that for me? Mm. Yeah, like uh okay, that doesn't look like Zambia stuff. But yeah. So and for some strange reason mm. when we launched uh in twenty nineteen, people used to think it is a new product from America. Mm. I think reason being is um shout out to Ryan, Ryan Banda. Mm. Um he had a trip to America which uh he got the pieces because he was one of the partners I I started working with in the beginning. And he is the one who actually told me um because what I wanted was just to well, was just to create just even 10 pieces. Mm. Yeah, just 10 pieces. Because I was uh, being asked everywhere, you this thing that you like to wear. Like, what is it? It's noble society. Yeah, like, it looks cool. You know, I want to, uh, I, wa- I want to share it. Mm. Yeah. So I told Ryan, I'm like, uh, you know what? Uh, I've got this project, which is uh, noble society, a clothing line. And um, I want... I just want to create 10 pieces, that's all. So what I want you to do is uh, tell me the budget for uh, the photo 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 shoot. Mm. How much do I need to, for that? And then um, go arrange for a day or come and shoot. Mm. Uh, get models or one model. And um, we'll, we'll create images that I'll just use to say, look, uh, this is coming up. Mm-hmm gonna cost this much and um that was it all right so for ryan um uh, the meeting that sparked this uh, i think it was uh, after i spoke to him about it i think it was him he went to sit down revisit the whole conversation <laughs> then um the day we were supposed to discuss when the shoot was supposed to happen he was like you know what um do you realize that this 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 dream that you have is bigger than what you think it is? Mm. I was like, uh, no, it's just 10 t-shirts that I want. I just need to sell 10 t-shirts and that's it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, we just can't sell 10 t-shirts. This, this, this is big. Like it can be bigger than what it, it is right now. So what I want is that um, let me partner with you. Mm. I will handle the photography side of it. Uh, let's start having let's ha- let's have a discussion about how we should brand noble society, mm. and um, let's put let's put like what is our messages together, our message together about the brand. Even as we are introducing it to people, people should know what noble society is, mm. what we intend to do and um how we are going to grow it so that became an interesting um spark from from ryan i was like okay so i was thinking of it small Mm -hmm. but then he saw it big so i was like okay so this can be bigger than what what it is right cool um we spent i think the whole 2018 we used to meet every weekend Mm with Ryan, would sit down, talk about the brand, how we're supposed to brand it, look at the mood board, how it's supposed to look like. Mm. So Ryan comes, uh, one of the meetings, he's, he offloads now how Nike is packaged. I'm like, we can do this. Mm. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay, cool. <laughs> mm. I like what I see here. So All you right. mean we're able to, yeah, able to do this and then um luckily he had a trip in america to america okay then he said i'm gonna need a few pieces which i'm going to use to um take photos of that we're supposed to use for the launch mm-hmm. i'm like cool no problem that's how i created i think the first four pieces of of the brand created them oh by the way that was after uh, I 
I bought some machines. You spoke about funding. Yeah. And capital is very important to business. But exactly. for now, proceed. Yeah. So that's how um, I created the first, the first, what's this, uh, the first pieces. Right. I think that was, um, there was one that was written straight for greatness. Um, the other one had um, no, no, the NS, no, bro. The NS, what's this? Um, logo. Logo. Mm -hmm. That was a sweatshirt. And then uh, the other shit, he did manage to, what is, uh, yeah, the other one, he did manage to take photos of it. Mm. So those two, those two pieces are the ones he used to create um, the photos. Okay. Took photos of them. And then now he sent me the images. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> I like, now I see why you said. Right, right. This is bigger than what um, I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Those like images spoke to me. Like, okay, uh, I now believe. So this dream is actually bigger than what I think it is. I'm like, mm. no funding. And... Uh, we just get started. So when he came back, uh, we continued. We continued with the meetings every weekend, and then he was like, "You know what? We're gonna need. Uh, we're gonna need to work with certain people, and we're gonna need a team to make this work." So we assembled um, a team, a few friends, and um, we kept on having meetings, uh, discussions of how we are going to roll out the the brand and our vision was actually to have an official launch more like um, mm. um to have a gig of some sort like a fashion kind of gig where we invite people to say uh, guys we're having an official launch for the mm. brand uh this is where it's going to be and ABCD. So we planned that whole year. But then we didn't have finances for that. So <laughs> we didn't have finances. So we're yeah. like, okay, how are we going to make the finances? So like, no, okay, let's see if we can get some sponsors. Okay. Yeah. Um that didn't work. We didn't uh we didn't even like really try to engage try to find any sponsors, sponsors for sales. No. All right. And then we're like, look, um, the day that we set the 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 launch was supposed to start i think january of 2019 but then uh because things were not put together we delayed and then i was like uh ryan we are running out of time mm. um uh, that was what 2019 second 22nd of june that's when we did the official launch for the brand so okay. before that i was just like okay look um yes we don't have sponsors mm. yes we don't have the money to do any of this but we have to start we just have to start okay what i've learned is that when you start the, you just have to start like there's no there's no two way option about this you ha just have to start um so during those those are uh, his preparations uh, mm -hmm. ryan had contact with uh an ethiopian there's an ethiopian brand that makes shoes so he knew the owner mm. so the owner he had conversation when he went to ethiopia he had conversations with the owner and uh, he presented to say this is a project that we want to start Mm -hmm. It's a brand, but we want to start with a bang. But then the owner was like, um, if you start with a bang, people easily forget about you guys. <sighs> so <Okay. laughs> Explain that. Yeah, like people easily still forget about you guys because you have no reason to grow. Mm. You have no room to grow. So I was like... Um, so when he came back, he mm -hmm. shared that with me. It's like, uh, this is what I learned. This is what I was advised to say. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was told, let it be authentic. Don't, there are certain uh, elements that 
they shouldn't be too extra like i know you want to produce a perfect uh perfect brand mm. but the thing is that there needs to be that authenticity in it there should be a piece or, or part of the match that you can make with your hands and people can easily relate to say oh they actually do make this with their hands and whatnot mm. so uh he was he was told to say uh why don't you put maybe chitenge on the shirts and whatnot so when he came back he told me about chitenge i was like um i've done a chitenge brand before that was uh yako yako kotuo mm. and what i learned from that is that um people easily duplicated <laughs> so for no boy told him to say look specifically for this one i don't want any duplicates like i want mm. to, i don't want it to be easily duplicated by people mm. someone should find it a headache to be like mm, to make this i need first of all to find out where the uh, where this artwork is and abc mm. this so and i was like look uh we can't do chitenge because everybody's doing chitenge what's going to make it different if mm-hmm. we add chitenge on it i mean like this give room to people who are Want already do doing yes like right like i told him like the first brand was yakoko tour mm-hmm. which had uh t-shirts and then running chitenge uh patterns on it okay yes but that was easily duplicated so for so to protect it i was like you know what let's create a product or a brand which which would be difficult to duplicate at okay. in the beginning but obviously when it grows yes we all know uh, we all know the end of this yes <laughs> yes yes so uh the point that that got me interested is when you mentioned to say don't start with a bang don't start with a bang mm. you need to give room for growth don't start with a product that's perfect because that's what we want everybody desires to like look I'm going to learn something mm. and I just need it to be perfect. But the thing is perfection kills. Mm. You see? Explain that for the audience, please. <laughs> and if you just tuned in, you're through to the men's table. We are on the table today with Mr. Camelo. Co, yes, not Co, sorry. CEO <laughs> and founder of Novo Society. Yeah. Yes, sir. As you were. So perfection. Perfection. Mm. Perfection kills. It slows you down. Okay. Explain. And uh, this is because of the experience that we had. The whole thing of wanting to put a fashion show together, mm. wanting to have this big launch. You mm-hmm. see, uh, we wanted our products to be printed perfectly right. with tags and everything. You name it. <laughs> Packaging, everything. You see? Where we wanted to have, like, even on the package, like, the type of uh, packaging, we uh-huh. did some research like you know what um if you know how pizza comes yeah yeah i was like <laughs> 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 like that form of packaging like can mm-hmm. we do that for the t-shirts you know okay. whereby you know you open it you're like wow yeah this is my pizza but it's a t-shirt and whatnot almost the way that uh beats by dre or apple exactly. does their packaging yes so because what would you what would you advise to people that are waiting for the perfect the perfect uh conditions to start you something. are killing yourself <laughs> okay yeah mm. you're killing yourself you are delaying yourself mm. don't do it <laughs> okay don't do it perfection perfection kills okay it's a killer you see it's a killer of a dream the fact that you want that's from my own description mm-hmm. uh the fact that you want something to be perfect you are not giving it room for growth and that's the thing is that whenever you do not give room for growth for something mm. you don't know the potential it has to grow mm. you say you don't know the potential mm-hmm. you say it can be better than this it can be better than the way you are thinking about mm. and that is because of how ryan told me to say look the dream is bigger than what you think it is right yeah because for me i was just thinking 10 shirts perfect shirts done and I'm like no you can't this is it's bigger than you so the fact that you need to give room for growth mm-hmm. and uh that giving room for growth is um allowing your audience to grow with you right yeah 
you're allowing the audience to grow with you. People get to know your brand. Mm-hmm. People get to connect with your brand because that was advice that was given to him. So like, right. look, building an audience, building yes. a building a community, so to exactly. say. Exactly. Okay. Like people need to know your story. They need to know how you started. People needs to see that consistency from you. People needs mm-hmm. to see. Uh, even just people are able to tell to say this thing is great. You know, when you're saying that, uh, uh, what comes to mind? It's almost like a superhero origin story. Yeah. Right? Um, where, <laughs> I mean, Spider-Man's uncle has been killed so many times yeah. in the <laughs> movies. But an origin story is very important. I don't think people are looking to root for a, for a perfect character. Yes. I think Superman without kryptonite? Yeah. Nah. Like it doesn't. Okay. Because you just okay. want him to be Superman. Okay. You don't want Superman to show his weakness. You don't want to know the weakness of Superman. Okay. But you don't know to say that weakness somehow exposes you to know how to manage it. Mm. Okay. Yes. You need to know how to manage your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to manage your failures. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I think most people don't like to be exposed to. Nobody wants to... To feel that that thing of I failed, <laughs> you see. Okay. You just want to get your hundred percent. Okay. Yes. I've got a thought to throw at you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I think one of the one of the things that make an origin story powerful is that we want uh, we want a brand, we want a business, we want a hero that we can relate with. Yes. Right. So yes. if you're perfect and we know that in reality, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't think I can relate with you. It's yes. hard to root for you. Mm-hmm. But when I see a character in movies go through hard times, get beaten by bigger, by bigger, even stronger characters, right? Like the characters that Superman has to fight are way stronger than him. So that think, do you think it's the same as well with businesses where people can find, people can find, a uh, a middle ground, a way to relate with the business. Oh, they started small. They started with one T-shirt. I could do that. So even me with what I'm doing right now, okay, I can start with uh, with this one thing. Okay, this is where they went. So do you think that we are subconsciously looking for brands that we can root for, that we can see ourselves in? Thoughts on that? Um the fact that people want to have a sense of belonging mm. for them once they connect to a brand they have that sense of belonging and they are also the more you the you more the more the brand grows mm-hmm. the more the people also feel they're growing they're growing with it yes they're right. growing with it mm-hmm. because they are also either uh funding it mm. by buying uh, your product. Yeah, they're feeling a part of it because exactly. I bought a product. I was exactly. one of the first to buy this piece. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that growth mindset is what actually encourages people to buy more from you. Okay. People like to spend money where they're seeing something is growing. Mm. You see? Because they want to see at they want to see you happy to say, yeah, his dream is big. Ah, he's there. He's built a store now. He's done this. He's done mm. that. I was like, yeah, I know him. I know where he's coming from. I know mm-hmm. his story. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to, I, I still buy his stuff. Right. See? I have, it's more like, um, what's it called? Like, like when you have a collection of, of something mm. and you're sharing with your friends to say, I own this, I own that, I own that. Right. Yes. So for them, it's a thing <laughs> of, I own the first piece. Mm. I own the first drop. I own the second drop. I mm-hmm. own everything. I own even this new. Right. You see? So that success that we're seeing, I'm a part of it. Yeah, a part of it. Exactly. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. So that was the lesson that we learned that day to say, look, you can't start with a bang. Mm-hmm. You can't start with a perfect product. Give room for people to grow, to grow with you. Mm-hmm for people to connect, that people get to know the story, that people get to, they want to be part of your story as well. Yeah. Yes, the more they buy from you, the more they feel noble at the end of the day. Okay. Yes. So you need to allow your dream to grow so that Mm -hmm. people can 
grow with you. Okay. Yes. So that lesson is what um, gave us a go ahead to say, you know what? Um, just start. Let's just start. Okay. Speaking of just starting, mm-hmm. you spoke a lot about. Uh, you spoke. Um, you spoke about. You spoke about funding and that you should just begin. Don't yeah. worry about the funding, right? What is your story? How did you get your first machine? Um, how did you get to a point where you can actually even print your first your first piece? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so I've got a friend called. Uh, what's this? I've got a friend, Tuli. Okay. Yeah, if you know Tuli, everybody. If you know Tuli, you know Tuli. <laughs> <laughs> Full name basis. Who's Tuli? What company does yeah, he run? Tuli Tuli Nampoki is also into um, uh, printing and branding. Okay. Um, if Tuli is your friend, if he identifies there's greatness in you, mm. he's going to provoke that greatness in you. Good. We need mani- such friends in life. Manifest, yes. So, um, I think uh, when I was running, what was that? My first brand was Yakoko Tour. Okay. So, what I wanted was to create tags for Yakoko Tour. And we met Tuli at the fashion show. Okay. Yeah, is it, is it Mangi? Yeah, my, I don't know what brand that was. Mangi Yeah, there was a brand that was being launched a store that was being launched at this park. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's where we met Tuli from. So Tuli said, no, I've got machines. I haven't yet just connected them, but I've got machines for printing. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, me being from a printing background, uh, what machines do you have? Ah, uh, no, I've got a heat press. I've got a cutter. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, a cutter. By by then, I'm like, well, okay, we didn't own a cutter. Mm. But um, that's the one that does video flex because... I'm already aware of how Mr. Maybin does from that experience with YouTube. Right. So I was like, okay, cool. Ah, no, they're very easy to use. You see? Oh, and I want to make some tags. So maybe uh, I should do this. Use you so that we can create those tags. And that's how we exchange numbers. And that's how we got to know mm. uh, each other just like that. So when creating, when making tags for... Because I wanted the product to be identified as Yaku Couture, mm. not whereby it looks like, oh, hi, just went to the tailor to have it made, you know. Right. So I was kind of doing branding, which I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> branding, okay. yes, like you didn't know, okay, this is part of branding. But then you're just like, no, I just want tags. I just want, you know, I just want to add this feature to it was for me it was more like a feature and the way an iphone gets to have new features on, mm. on the phone so i'm like okay for me i'm going to add tags it'll be like a new feature for the shirts to be uh, to be easy for people to identify to say this is a yaku couture t-shirt mm-hmm. so when we made when i met Tuli, got it good to know each other and uh, i think i was working so in my job um uh, the business closed down so uh yeah the business closed down and that was that was the end of employment. So I had a conversation with Tuli and I'm like, uh, dude, um, I want to expand my services for Yakuku Tour. I want to go beyond uh, just having T-shirt products um, because I've lost my job. Mm-hmm. I want to now maybe uh, inc- uh, put what is introduced printing services mm. so that I could I can just make ends meet make some form of money and whatnot he was like cool there's no problem with that so um we actually talked about it and um he gave me uh an opportunity of using his machines mm, okay. yes He's, he was like you know what um i know what you want to create and um I think he saw he, there's something that he saw which which he didn't uh, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <coughs> something he saw which <coughs> something he saw that which he didn't tell me, and um, he was like, "Cool, mm-hmm. uh, you can use my machines." Yes, sir. He gave me a deal. Uh, you're my friend. I will not uh, charge you. <laughs> All right. But uh, you can give me commission of each project that you that you that you are this work on mm. you have access to my machines make use of them nice yeah 
So I studied and um, that's how I expanded the introduced printing services to mm. Yoko Kotua, uh, which I, st- I started in 2020 was 2014, mm-hmm. but then um, which has now rebranded to Noble Print. Okay. Yes. Um, so when I started using the machines, I started now, he started teaching me how to use them. Mm. Okay, so this is the cutter, this is how you use it. Um, this is, uh, what program is that? Uh, video, f- uh, no, Flex, it's called Flex. Mm. It's the one that we, uh, which is used for creating artworks before you print them. So he showed me. And whenever he has projects, I would, uh, I would help him. I would help him and then you give me a cut. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So for me, whatever projects he gets to have, I'll take my phone, take pictures, and then upload on uh on my page. So now that started bringing uh, attention on the page, mm-hmm. and that's how people started calling in to say, "No, oh, I oh you print t-shirts. I want, I want mm-hmm. ten t-shirts done. I want." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's how, that, f- that's how you fell into the printing. That's how I fell into the printing okay. game now. Let's go. Yes. So there are more conversations I've had with Tuli, and he always tells me to say, look, um, from the money that you make, you probably need to split. Yes, uh, you need to pay your renters and whatnot, mm-hmm. but then you need machinery at the end of the day. Right. Yes, you need to start investing into buying uh, machinery. Mm-hmm. So each and every project which I'll do, I'll put part of what is this? Seven. Savings, yeah. Seven, mm-hmm. seven, savings. Until I think that was like 10 grand. Mm. At the 10 grand, yes. Then um, I've, uh, my friend's older brother was selling his cutter. Mm. Yeah. And then when I saw that, I was like, ah, okay. So from the 10 grand, I'm able to buy a cutter. Mm. Then there was this ad which I saw on Facebook which they were selling a heat press. Mm. So I was like, okay, with the 10 grand I'll be no, actually, at 8 grand mm. I had to ask my sister for for 2 grand to say, look, lend me 2 grand, I will pay back. What I need right now is just these two most important machines, mm. the cutter and the heat press. Then the rest is history. So yeah. that's how my sister borrowed me, le- is borrowed or lend. <laughs> yeah, she gave me money, and then um, I added it onto the eight grand, mm-hmm. and um, that's how I bought those two machines. Okay. I didn't. I didn't even tell Tuli to say this is what I'm machines. doing. No. Ah, uh, he just saw me come with machines. At, at uh, the, the small at the workplace that we mm. his, he, in fact it was his home stroke what's his workplace mm. he just saw me so he's, he's <coughs> he just saw I came uh, with a car <laughs> he just saw we were floating machines from the car like mm. ah okay cool alright alright so for him I think he found pleasure in that. Mm. That the following day is like, you know what? This is good. So it's like you've been telling this guy, look, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What uh, what you have described right now, that in a sense is actually mentorship. Yes. Why I'm coming to that is on this show we talk a lot about mentorship. Mm-hmm. Men need mentorship, right? So this was this was this was mentorship. Yeah. You went under somebody who was ahead of you in the industry. They taught you everything that they know and they were interested in seeing you in seeing you grow. Mentors are people that would like to see you grow. Uh I mean he was literally pushing you to he was benefiting off your talent, mm-hmm. but he was pushing you to have your own equipment. And even when you did actually take the step that he was pushing you to, he was proud of you. He was happy for you. Okay. Have you had other mentors in business? And at what point did you realize that, hey, I need mentorship in business and this is something that I need to, that I need to invest in? 
uh, when it comes to mentorship, I would lie. Mm. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see the value in mentorship. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't exposed to that, um, mm. the whole mentorship program and right. um, well, what mentorship is. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was so focused in developing Noble mm-hmm. that the certain uh, things that I've, in fact, the certain things that I overlooked. Mm-hmm. So technically, I was being mentored by Tuli. Right. Which, uh, <coughs> he pushed me to a point where he was like, look, I need you to improve. Mm-hmm. You see? Um, this is how I do things. Mm-hmm. Whatever project I I do as well, I have a list. It's like, look, I have a list. I've got this equipment which I want. I've got this. This is how I balance my profits. This is how start recording whatever transactions that you're doing. Mm. Record them, so that you're able to know to say, okay, when the month comes, this is how much money I'm making, and um, you can you uh, yeah how much you're making. From there, able to know okay what mm-hmm. machines what what machines do you need? Right. So having access to machines back then, you could only order them online. It's not like now where we have you have companies, companies that can actually that, provide. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was very it was it was a challenge to to always want you always have to buy outside. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the whole mentorship, nah. <laughs> then <laughs> I've been researching a lot. You've been researching a lot. Yes. And by the way, you did say you do like to figure yes. things out on your own. On my own, yeah. What is your perspective of mentorship now at the level that you've gotten at? Do you have are you intentional of mentorship? Do you have that? I I don't I don't have a mentor. Okay. Yeah. And um I did try to talk to a few people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, hey, uh, I think I need to be mentored, you know. But then the response that they always tell me mm. is that you have it in you. Okay. I'm like, ah, dude, uh, I also need to progress, you know, like the way you are progressing, like, I need that. Okay. So you've yeah. had a difficulty finding mentors. Yes. Okay. But then the response, even I think one time uh, when I lost my job, mm. uh, I think it was Pastor Pangwe. He was working for FNB then. Uh, yeah, he was working for FNB. He was actually one of the first people who believed also in Yako Kutua. He, mm. he, he did purchase some t-shirts. So when I was pushing that project, uh, for me, I was like, okay, this project isn't like working, working. Mm. So I need a job because that's the only way I need, I can cut off for uh, expenses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So there was a time I was from the bank and I met, I ran into him and I was telling him to say, look, um, you work here, aren't you able to like, you know, uh, find me a help job a or brother yeah, help a brother. But then he looked at me and said, you don't need a job. <laughs> like, uh, what do you mean? They're like, you don't need a job. You, okay. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. Yes. Like, you are not seen from the way we look at things. Like, Mm. you have a business in you. Mm -hmm. You do have that. But there's just something that you are not um, seeing that you have a business in you and you can make it grow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, after that, I'm like... I really need this job. Like, you don't understand. Like, I don't need this job. But then it was just like, no, you have. You have what it takes. Okay. So, for context. So, so for context, right? Uh-huh. You've not had... Uh, okay, you've had... I mean, inf- you've had... I mean, that... Some I mean, form of Tuli, influence. Tuli, Tuli, yeah. Tuli's mentorship. Mm. Um, working with Steven, that is also informal, mm. informally mentorship. Yes. But from what I'm hearing from you is what has stood out for you is people believing in you. Yes. So, okay. All right. So people having faith in you. That's where the difficult part is, mm. whereby you you don't have finances. Mm. People are seeing you push a project. Mm-hmm. They are seeing they're seeing the greatness that you don't mm. see in you, and then when you talk to them and they tell you you have it, figure it out. Mm. 
Mm. I remember even recently I was talking to Stephen after he became as um one of the directors at Creative Creatives um is it giraffe giraffe creatives yeah yeah so i was like you know what i need a job <laughs> i need <laughs> 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 i need i need a job like i need to know i'm starting to develop the interest of marketing, marketing. and advertising mm-hmm. so like okay how do i push uh i think i lack knowledge in this mm-hmm. and whatnot but then uh when i met him he also said the same thing yeah like I yeah. don't get what you are trying to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't get it. Like you're talking about what marketing are you talking about? You already did know marketing. You've been doing it. You've been doing you it. You have been doing it, sir. It's something that we see from mm. you every day. Okay. So what are you even talking about that you need marketing? What marketing do you need to learn? You are already doing it. What's the what's the lesson there for you though, right? So you have uh you have outside people noticing noticing what you're doing yes. so is it a, is it a thing where you don't have language for what you're doing no you just don't have confidence mm. you you don't believe in yourself so that's where you think you need that help mm. yes okay so because of fear and there's no what's this lack of confidence mm. It's giving you, yeah, lack of confidence. If, if I let me put it like this, the lack of confidence is giving you fear. Mm. You see, the fear to be like, okay, uh, the fear of, um, wait, let me, there's <laughs> something that I'm trying to explain. Mm. Yeah, I just need to put words together. Okay. Uh, it has to be attached with us, is believing in yourself. Okay. So, Lack of confidence. Mm. Um, yeah. So lack of confidence is somehow creating fear in you that you are failing to believe in yourself. Mm. You see. So if people from a distance are able to see greatness in you and you don't see it, it becomes a problem. Okay. You see. It becomes a problem for you because you cannot grow out of that box. You see? Yeah. You're not thinking outside the box. Yes, okay. you may not see how people are seeing it, but because uh, it's much easier to see from a distance than be in the situation. Yeah. You are True. in the fight or you are in the you are in the game. You see? Someone who's watching <laughs> from afar is able to see, look, he just needs to duck a little bit. Yeah. You see? One, two, yeah, three one, moves. Two. Yeah. So what's your advice to young entrepreneur i'm listening right now not even just entrepreneurs i'm in my career i'm doing something right now i'm struggling with confidence believe in yourself how believe in yourself all it needs this is how it helped me mm. when i launched uh noble right all I, all i needed was just one person to believe in, okay. the, in the in the dream okay when ryan believed it gave it built confidence in me Mm. It, it it's that confidence now sparked that um sparked that my uh, what that was this my mindset more like unlocked mm. whereby be like okay since he's saying it can grow it means i just need to do one and two th- three things and then mm-hmm. it grows yeah so it more it's what is that belief <coughs> from one person unlocks okay. your doubt you see from from your story sounds like you have a lot of solid people around you yeah. so i can name ryan steven tully these are all people that seem to be uh, i know all three of them mm-hmm. seem to be very very direct people um they do have vision so would then your advice be you need to surround yourself with people that can see things that you can't see exactly okay you need you need that environment okay you need um go on yeah, you need that that environment of where people believe in your dream, mm-hmm. because that is what's going to give you confidence. It's going to give you motivation. It's going to give mm-hmm. you that drive, that focus to say, "Look, this dream can grow. This vision can become mm. a reality." 
Okay. So an yes. atmosphere of faith is important for you. Exactly. I have a follow up question with that. Um, listening to your story as well, it's not like your confidence has always been completely just on the rise, mm-hmm. right? The time, the moment that you meet uh, Pastor Mpangwe, that is when you've been, you had been running. <laughs> yeah. The pro, you had been running your business already. So now my question would be, what's your advice to anybody who's listening right now? What do you do on the days when you don't have enough faith in your dream? How do you get yourself back up? You need to motivate yourself. Okay. How do you yeah. motivate yourself? Um, for you. For me? Yes, sir. I always... Um, just wait. <laughs> sure. Mm. Yeah. Um... You have to motivate yourself. Um, it's very difficult, I won't lie. Mm. But the thing is that you always have to ask yourself a question to say, um, why did God give me this? Mm. And uh, when vision is given to you, it's mm-hmm. not for you. It's for other people. Mm. It doesn't have to benefit you. It's supposed to benefit others. Okay. You see? So your motivation is always um, you're building this thing to help people. Mm. You're building this thing to fulfill God's purpose for your life. So that sh- that itself is motivation for you to keep on going, and that is what has also um, that's what has also given me that motivation to keep on pushing. Okay. You see, to say, this is this is God's vision. Mm-hmm. This is not for me. It's for either our generation and generations to come. Mm-hmm. It's going to help them. It's not just going to help me alone, but the thing is that it's about others. You see? So even when you are down, always ask yourself a question to say, why did you start? Right. That same reason why you started is the same reason you have to Continue. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Yes. So finding purpose um, almost outside of yourself. Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, for uh, for my uh, for my next question, where noble society has reached now, mm-hmm. right? Um, noble society did a collaboration with uh, University of Lusaka. Which is, which is, it's one of the firsts in the history of this country. It's one of the firsts where an urban, an urban clothing line does a collaboration with an institution. And then to top it off as well, uh, Pompey as well did a collaboration with you. These are two powerful brands in two different spheres, right? How did those, how did those come about for you? Yeah, I think I think I think the Unless project is uh, should be my favorite one. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> okay, that was like a childhood dream. Of, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, like okay. For me, when it comes to apparel, I always think beyond beyond t-shirts. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. So it's something that. As a kid, I always wanted to do. I'm like one day I'll have to make, I'll have to collaborate with, with schools, mm-hmm. where, cause when you look at schools now, even just primary level, um, that whole idea of PE, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like when I look at the PE attires that are there, and I'm like, um, yeah, no, no. nah, like, uh, okay, and then. When you look at the western side of the world, when you look at okay the gym gear, mm. you know, you're like okay these guys are well equipped. Like they have, um, they have apparel which is meant for the gym, mm. but why don't we have those kind of uh, what's this merchandise or apparel mm-hmm. in uh, in schools? Nice. And we're like. It's PE, and why is it supposed to be white? So we're going to get dirty. And <laughs> 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 so, 
it's a very good point it's a yeah very we're gonna good get point. dirty like uh yeah. yeah so for me it was like okay for school mm. as um even school like college university you want some form of belonging you want to be when somebody sees a piece on you or a piece, a piece of clothing on you they should mm. not say oh this one's from unilas or oh, this one's from unza Mm. This one is from this institution. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that was a good opportunity. <laughs> it was a good opportunity. And um, this is how it happened. We, I think earlier, earlier this year, we were, we were invited for orientation. And uh, we went to set up our table there. Mm. And uh, Mrs. Chipoya actually ordered to to sh- to what's this what was it the just grace just grace products before the orientation mm. and um when she was coming to collect them at the table mm. she looked at the merchandise all right she was like this is cool um i like this i like i like the the quality i like the different designs and whatnot and she was like, she was like ah, I think, can we do a project together? Like, she just asked, like, can we do a project together? Mm. And I was like, uh, this is something that I've always wanted to... Right. You were there, you were there. And I told you to say, look, this is conversations I've had with you to say, I want to... I want to create... To create more... Uh, to collaborate with the school and create something mm. that students will be proud of. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, cool. Um, let's, let's have a chat. Let's have a meeting and see how, where this thing goes. All right, okay. cool. So the meeting was uh, scheduled. We, we had the meeting and uh, we shared ideas mm-hmm. and uh, I was given that opportunity of, okay, um, create, create, create samples. Let's see what you can, what is, you can mm-hmm. come up with. Mm-hmm. So knowing it's an institution, I was like, okay, uh, how am I going to break in? You know, like uh, I'm sure they want to maintain their logo. They want to maintain mm. uh, the certain features they would want to maintain. But um, how do we, how am I going to make it different? So I put myself in a position of, okay, if I was a student, mm. what would I wear? Mm-hmm. You see? And and looking at the way Unilas students are, these are students who were um, uh, mostly what's this uh, Nike products, Nike apparel, mm-hmm. uh, Adidas, and whatsoever. So you're looking at okay, if students like to wear this high this, end, this type of brands, this mm-hmm. type of brands. Um, so meaning. Even, um, yeah, if students like to wear this type of brand, it means we need to create an apparel piece that students will be proud of. Right. Which will have that sense of belonging for them. And um, I looked at um, how Harvard University, they have their T-shirts, mm. you know, like mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. can tell, okay, yeah, uh, it's from Harvard. Mm what not the brand the brand yes mm-hmm. so for me that was that was what's in my in my mind i'm like i need to create a piece which has those type of features so even so i was like okay here what i'm gonna do is i need to give it a logo mm. i need to give it a feel whereby um it should be different from the the logo for the school mm. it should have its own logo for the apparel uh, so that it can be identified uh, for it to have that character. Mm. Yeah, that's that identity. So once that meeting happened and then I was given that go ahead, for me, that was now motivation to create something. Mm. So I went on the internet. I looked at um, for inspiration purposes. I looked at different uh, types of university um how certain t-shirts for university visitors are designed 
and then I was like, okay, um, since it's a collaboration, uh-huh. it needs to describe what Unilas is. So for me, I was like, okay, we have no Boredi, we have Unilas. Mm. So, uh, yes, Nobo and Unilas. So let's describe Unilas as a Nobo uh, institution. Mm. Because it's Unilas has become popular. Every every student wants to wants to go to Unilas, and I'm sure it's because of how the the whole system is set up. Mm. Like it's open to new ideas. It's um, a high pass rate, I guess. Yeah. So um. Since it was open to new, the, since the Unilas is open to new ideas, for me it was a thing of let's let's describe Unilas. What is Unilas to us? Like it's got that noble character in it. And hence, yes. noble. Hey, noble, exactly. Unilas. So that's why noble Unilas. So that's how I described it. So I put the pieces together. I had to design the logo. Mm. And then had to the certain features which I tried, mm-hmm. and um, some did work, some worked. Until now, <laughs> I was like, okay, it this is it. Trial and error. Yeah, I was like, okay. this is it, because I wanted to just like uh, put the logo, uh, the lion head, mm. the unilast. That's what I was like. Ah, people won't really understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. The fact that we want to describe that element of um, that feature of Unilas being noble. Okay. Yeah, that character, like, Unilas has that noble character in it. So I'm like, for people to understand it, uh, why not just say noble Unilas? Nice. Well, well explained. Yes. Well explained. Well explained. It was a great collab. Yes. And now you've also collaborated with uh, Pompe. Mr. Chaka, Pompey, yeah. on his tour. Yeah. Great piece, saw it, good stuff. Um, we've now come to the section of, uh, of the show, which is called Resource Center. Okay. This is where the guest gets to recommend resources. Um, what has shaped your perspective? Where do you go for information for resources as a person? You mentioned a lot uh, Google and YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're, not, you're not into, you're not exactly, don't have any book recommendations? Uh, no. Not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Um, okay. I think f- uh, when it comes to resources, it, it all depends on. Um, mm-hmm. It all depends on what you are doing. What's your interest? All right. Are you um, um, are you into business? Mm-hmm. Are you because uh, there's different forms of businesses. There's mm-hmm. um, there's food. There's inter- there's entertainment mm-hmm. and um, clothing. So it right. all depends on which um, field you are interested in. So for me, what mm-hmm. has worked for me has been YouTube and Google. Google. Yeah, I hear you. Yes. Each person, uh, each person definitely, definitely learns different. Yes. Yes, sir. And uh, yours is quite a unique story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but read your books. It's read your books. <laughs> <laughs> It's very important. Read books. Like read your read books. books. Like you have um, books that talk about faith, real books that talk about wealth. Uh, expand family, your knowledge, basically. Like expand, yes. Like do not just limit yourself to um, one source. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't be like me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when you do, like <laughs> don't be like me though. Yeah. Don't be like me. Yeah. Okay. But um, you do understand that YouTube and Google have all the information that you need for every mm-hmm. every every field that you want to access um embark on i got yeah. you i got you yeah well my guy thank it's been you a so pleasure much for coming through <laughs> thank you i appreciate you i appreciate you in sharing your story your kindness your openness as well um, there's a lot to pick apart. There's a lot to pick up our, apart about your story. But some of the takeaways that I have are staying consistent, starting, just start. Don't wait for the perfect conditions to move. Um, 
prep time as well looks like you spent a lot of time preparing in preparation as well that's very important yes sir. and you seem yeah. to value you seem to value having having quality quality community so yeah this has been good this has been yeah. good uh ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us thank you for thank you for tuning in and being with us we've had mr camelo mwape mlenga with us i am swapping the mwape and the mlenga <laughs> entire your last name is Mo- is mwape, mwape. Yes. So Mlenga Camelo Mwape with us And uh, we're going to have him do his uh, King's Affirmation So the King's Affirmation is the last section of the of the show Okay This is where you look into the camera, sir And you speak into the microphone And you speak to anybody who's upon your heart uh, Whatever the Holy Spirit is putting upon your heart To say to affirm a young man out there right now just whatever it is you'd like to say to encourage somebody out there, go ahead. So I will switch the camera back on to you whenever you're ready, sir. Yeah. Um, young king, young woman. It's okay. Young king, young queen. Young speak queen. to whoever you want to speak to. Yeah. Young king, young queen. Believe in yourself. Mm. It's very important that you believe in yourself. Uh, that's the only way that other people will believe in you. Um, your vision is all that matters. Do not seek for perfection. Allow your imperfections to... You can correct your imperfections. And you can grow. Allow, allow yourself to fail so that you learn from your failures. That's the only way you can progress. That's the only way you can learn and get better. All right. That's what's up. Nice. I like it. I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this episode. There's a lot to learn. Play it back. Catch it on YouTube. Um, If you're listening in right now, we appreciate you tuning into uh, RSCV. So Thursdays, 14 hours. Fridays, 16 hours on YouTube uh, from us today. That's it. We'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. You have a lovely day. God bless you.